here so it's very 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 exciting i'm not really sad about it i'm actually grateful for it and i thank god for it um and thank god for the savage chat looking lovely thank you very much enchanted kitchen by charmaine thank you so much so guys what's we're waiting what do you think about the new um rule or the cutoff or what do you call it you know how the new law that has come through is saying that no more lobola in, in zimbabwe i'm from zimbabwe lobola is sort of like a bride price that uh, uh, a male pays towards the female that he's looking to get married to um so like as a token of appreciation that's how i see it but um apparently the law in zimbabwe has cut it off so what do you think i know probably most of the males here will be happy about it no more mombeze umai hi mercy how are you thank you for coming through hey dynamis fashions how are you hey clara how are you oh doc is saying is that for real um thought it was fake news i don't know i'm just reading what, out what gets come through it's been making noise on in the zimbabwean community so i don't know what's happening uh i don't know how people feel about it but for myself i don't know i don't know how to feel about it you know for me i just think lobola or bright prize is sort of like a just a token of appreciation to the girl's family to say ah thank you so much for taking care of this girl for the past 36 years for the past four years 42 years messy messy saying one is one is not going for free <laughs> please let us chop our money to you too we'll take your parents other ways i agree for me it's just a token of appreciation honestly just to say thank you family for making sure that this girl is well educated they are very intelligent and they are beautiful they know what they're doing they will take care of me and take care of my family so with a token of six thousand pounds Twenty thousand Zimbabwean money. I don't know. Thank you, Mumbai or my thank you. But I think some families have had to take advantage of it. Uh, we need Lobola, just not as a business. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was just about to say. That most probably some families have taken an advantage of it and have seen that as uh, as a business um, and. Well, when I was reading on Zimbo Live, it was saying that. Did he, our dad's never finished paying this lawola, you know, but here we are, you know, very intelligent, Takachenge, we happy families and everything. Um, so, yeah. Someone is saying, I still have one more and I'm waiting for my cows. <laughs> no more cows. <laughs> no more cows. I wonder how it's going to be like. Uh, because I've got a daughter. She's only four. I was looking forward to that Lobola, you know. So I don't know if I'm going to get that soon or not. Uh, Ruveneko, where are you? So people are asking, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Don't worry, guys. She's coming through. She's coming through. She's coming through. So, yeah. Oh, tough teen is here. You're here to be the police. Tough teen. Tell me, why are you here to be the police? Nati, how are you? Wakachena, my way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please thank Los Boutique for me. Ah, uh, so save the video car after we might need it and we can download. Of course, Zim Celebrity, I will save the video. The video will be, will be available. Um... Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, let me see if she's here now. So what have you been up to, guys? What have you been up to yourselves? You know, what have you been up to yourselves? The weather has suddenly changed. It's raining, it's cold. Today, there's the sun. I don't know what's happening with this weather. Hey, sis. Hey, Pesty, how are you? Thanks for coming through. Um, Enchanted Kitchen, she's saying, I have three sons, they have to pay Lobola. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So I'll bring my daughter to you so that I can eat your Lobola. Right? Thank you, Prelia. Thank you, thank you very much. So last week, just a recap on what we did last week, what we talked, what we spoke about. 
I spoke briefly about who I am, how I started, um, just briefly. Um, we'll come to that at a later stage. Or I'll get one of you guys here to interview me. Who knows? Um, so we spoke to Chennai of By Chennai Events, which is based in London. Uh, she's doing some amazing work. Uh, she's an event planner based in London. Um, so we just spoke about what wedding planners do and what wedding planning is all about. And we also discussed about the different things that we go through as wedding planners, the behind the scenes that you don't see. So if you haven't watched it, um, it's still on my Instagram TV. You can have a look at it after this one or on my YouTube channel as well. Uh, so that you can all catch up, you know, I want to interview you, there you go, just let me know when, when you want to interview me, then, yeah, then you can know everything about me, how I started my business, hi AGC, Donka Star, lovely to see you, how are you, how are you, how are you, ah, guys, I'm so, so excited today, uh, she's coming through now, bear with me, I want to interview you too, so you got to interview <laughs> the interviewers. Okay, guys, yes, you will interview me. Hey, Ruben Echo, how are you? Yes, Ruby is here. She's here, guys. She's here, guys. Oh, no, that's an Ah, ah. Let's get it I know you're all excited and if you've got any questions there's a question box that's there you can ask questions hey ruby how are you hi <laughs> how's it going <laughs> i'm good i'm good thank you so when is ruvenico coming <laughs> <laughs> no we're here now we're here now I'm so happy to be here she coming? oh no so thank you very much thank you very much for Coming through on Savvy Chats, uh, just for us to chat about anything and everything, right? I don't know, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always scared on the other side of it, you know. It never gets yeah. it never gets old. I, I don't get used to it. Like, can I just interview yeah. you? Can we just change this right now? I've got so many questions for you. <laughs> so the three interviewers now. <laughs> oh my no, god, not today. Not today. I'm interviewing you today. <laughs> all right. I'll try my best. I'll try my best. I will. And, and all the, the guests that are online with us today will be interviewing you as well. So who knows? Hi, you know. man. <laughs> yeah, man. It's nice. I think that the time you chose, I was thinking about it and I was like, this woman has literally stopped my Saturday in its tracks because at 4 p.m. there's nothing you can do before and very little you can do after. Yeah. So I was like, you know? Um, because so, you can't go out and about. So an hour ago, what were you doing? Because <laughs> you were ready. You know, and I've got my niece over, you know, she's here with Tete for the weekend. And so oh, I was like, nice. really, I've got to hurry up, I've got to hurry up, I've got to live now, now. And then for some reason, I reread the flyer and I was like, oh my God. Like, Danyara <laughs> chat. <laughs> At least it wasn't you going on live. In, imagine if you were interviewing me, then you went on live at three your time, and it was two I'm my doing, time, and then I'm just there. I'm doing, and waited for somebody, you know. But yeah, look, it's all good. It's fine. It's fine. We got no, thank you for coming. <laughs> Sorry, Ben, we'll that. just dig into it, straight into it. We all know who you are, yeah? So I'm not going to be asking all that. If somebody yeah. doesn't know who the Veneco is, Go ask her yourself. <laughs> DM her. Go on the internet. You'll find her. She's this amazing lady. She's a radio and television host, a consultant, a digital strategist, an entrepreneur, a moderator. So I had someone, Nati. Nati, are you here? His first question was, hey, this lady, how is, how is she managing all her six titles? How amazing is that? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, firstly, I just want to say, Tappy, honestly, thank you for having me on this platform. You know, I never take it lightly when you're called to speak to women or, you know, the, an audience of any kind. Um, so, yeah, I can see T-Base is tuned in as well. Hi, T-Base. Good to see you. Um, you know, and you know what? Um, the titles, to be fair, it's just a lot of... Um, 
it's never anything different from my one line of work, which is within media. Um, I yeah. remember I was having a debate with someone yesterday and they were like, never be a jack of, of all trades and a master of none. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what I've managed to do, to say, I work in my line of work, whether I add anything else to what I do, it'll always be within the media space. I'm yes. a media person. Yeah. You know, so yeah. you won't find me far off from what I do. I think the most craziest thing I've done is some brand ambassador titles, which step out of my um, realm in terms of media. But, you know, being a brand okay. ambassador is in that. But, you know, lately it's this car thing, you know. Um, people are like, oh, what I'm going to do? I'm going to ah, nice cars. And I'm like, guys, yeah. do you really think these cars are mine? <laughs> you know, it's work. No pasta. You know, um, but I really obviously being associated with them and being able to be associated with those kinds of vehicles and all of that um, sort of diversifies yeah. my view. People look at you and now think, no, touch and truck, I wind up. You know, but yeah. in reality, yeah. it's still marketing, isn't it? It's still within media, yeah. it's still advertising, it's still using your following, your portfolio yeah. um, to influence and to, to, to encourage people to follow certain spaces. So I never really be yeah. far off. So say, is it hard to carry all the titles? No, because it is all me. It's just all under one really? umbrella, really. Which yeah. is really good. It's good when people see yeah. you as an influencer. They're learning something from you, which is really good. And some brands, they they, they, they want you to be their brand ambassadors, which I think is really amazing um, for someone yeah. think, to think or feel like that, uh, which is yeah. really good. And if I can, for someone who's actually in the media yourself, what sort of mm-hmm. advice can you give to someone who's just started or a young lady or young woman who's just started in the media? What can you advise them? Okay. Um, well, right now, in terms of young media people that I advise, I can see Ropa is there. She's my intern from my previous job. Hi, Ropa. Um, and she also was like, you know, I want to get into media. I want to do, I want to start a podcast. I want to do so much. And the only mm-hmm. advice I'll always give women or anybody who wants to enter anything is just be true to who you are. So many of us spend time to cheat our junior, to sing out the music city to do what we did the next movie. Yeah, Kawanda, you know, um, mm-hmm. military chasing the tail, doing something that mm-hmm. is not yours. You know, so mm-hmm. I always say, make sure you find your purpose. And that comes down to you identifying um, who you are as a person. And if you're spiritual, yeah. Yeah. following your calling. And that's what you're meant to do. Mm-hmm. So uh, mm-hmm. I think that's something that some people die without knowing their calling. And that's the hardest thing. It's so sad. You know, but the idea is mm-hmm. to find what it is that you're here for. What is your purpose? What's your space? Own it, dominate it, mm-hmm. and not be apologetic about it. You know, don't be so apologetic stop. about it. Like that. Nah. Never and never stop learning. You know, we have so mm-hmm. many ways we can advance who we are. We've got online courses these days, we've got mentors, mm-hmm. we can reach out to you. And the idea is to always stay ahead of your game. Some people get comfortable, mm-hmm. you know, by other professions. You know, you'll find that someone will sort of stay um, in their profession for years and years, but ours, it's a time. Mm-hmm. It was constant. You have to reinvent yourself. How do you become better than mm-hmm. the next blogger, next YouTuber, and the next Instagrammer? Mm-hmm. You know, so we all kept on our toes. Um, so that's always really mm-hmm. interesting. But yeah, so that's mm-hmm. that's a few lessons I'd say to people. Mm. Somebody may be asking, how do I know my purpose? How do I know that this is what I want? Is it something that I'm born with, or is it something that I just feel a passion for, and then I just pursue that? <laughs> I think um, spiritually, it's something that you are born with, and it is because that is the reason you were born with by God. Um, and if it mm-hmm. is something, if you're a really deeply spiritual person, it's really just about where does your heart always go to? Um, where do you mm-hmm. always keep back you know i was at a talk in rwanda last year with tara i trent and she was mm-hmm. saying that if you want to know what you're passionate about for ask yourself what breaks my heart so it's mm-hmm. about asking yourself what breaks my heart what makes me tick what do i constantly mm-hmm. think about and say you know what i wish i could change that the things that keep you mm-hmm. up at night that one project that's always tugging at you but you know yeah. yeah so um yeah not hard to identify our calling i think a lot of us ignore it sometimes much like women right you enter a bad relationship, uh, ignoring all the signs, uh, but you know deep down you know. But you're like, I want no tanaru, you know. So a calling to be honest, you try to convince yourself. You, know, you try to convince yourself, but your calling mm-hmm. is something that not so gently, but consistently, incessantly, mm-hmm. like tap, mm-hmm. tap, 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 tap. It never goes mm-hmm. away. So if you just mm-hmm. listen mm-hmm. to your, to your heart, you will really know mm-hmm. the way you're meant. Mm-hmm. 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 No, that's yeah. that's 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 very true. And Ingoda TV is saying we're here. Hi, Ingoda TV. We can see you. <laughs> They're everywhere. <Love> to you. <laughs> Ingoda TV is everywhere. Hi, Joseph. How are you? 
So when you hear when you hear these two words, let me know what you think or what comes to your head. Women empowerment. Okay. Uh, you know what? It's almost like feminism. You know, some of these terms for me have become a little bit cheesy and a bit annoying. You know, um, we can't be in 2020 and still having to talk about women's empowerment. We've been talking mm-hmm. about women's since the suffragettes, you know, in the you know 19th century. So for me, I'm like, well, women empowerment. Uh, you know what, Taffy? <laughs> um, look, if I don't want to know, let me not be like that. Let me let me answer you. Right, so let me answer you. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's TV. All right, sorry, women's empowerment. <laughs> to me um, means um, what's the textbook answer basically the textbook answer for this is um, being able to empower young girls and women to be able to stand for themselves that with or without mm-hmm. a man or without anything they are able to be mm-hmm. somebody in their own right they're able to take care of themselves mm-hmm. and they're never left hanging right that mm-hmm. empower a woman so much that she doesn't need anything or anyone but herself that is the textbook mm-hmm. answer of women empowerment but for me it's beyond that you know i just um i've been talking a lot about love and and our relationships and that's something we don't talk about we boast so much about women's empowerment government but for me that's not women's empowerment women's empowerment is also about our, our love lives an area we don't yes. talk about that you can be yes. that strong Empowered woman sitting in that powerful office, but your heart is broken. Your marriage, your yes. life, or you're lonely, or you're single. So for me, empowerment becomes um, bigger than that textbook answer. That's why I rolled my eyes and I was like, "Look, let's not just talk about Jim. the same type of and yeah, got to and try to change." So that's where where I kind of base my my understanding of women's empowerment. That is the epitome of being a strong, independent woman is about being able to be mm-hmm. okay. You know, means mm-hmm. physically, emotionally, all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Perfect. And why is it important to have a mentor in your life? Because you don't know everything and you've got no time to learn mistakes, every single mistake yourself. Oh, you need a mentor. Also, because listening yeah. to your parents sometimes is hard. Like we all know, sometimes your mom will tell you something, then your mentor will tell you, mm-hmm. but you'll do it because your mentor said so. Um, so you know what? Mm-hmm. You need a mentor because you need someone sometimes that's not too emotionally attached to you, but who will give you an independent opinion, but it's somebody who you respect enough that no So mentor. So mentor. And your life in terms of your finances and your career, then also kumba. So sometimes those can be three or four different people. Because I see mentor one okay. and you don't put your entire mm-hmm. life in one hand to say, look, for my weight, what do I do? For my health, what do I do? With my savings, what do I do? There's no one person yeah. in the world yeah. who knows all those things. So mentors are important so that um, we, it's a compass, right? That every time you're in the wilderness doing something, you just have a compass, a reference point that you just always Mm -hmm. go back to. Yeah, it's Mm -hmm. important. Which is what most people say, have a mentor, even in your business or anything, have a mentor. um, Because like you said, you do not know everything. And Mm -hmm. the best, if it's someone that has actually walked that way um, before you, they can actually guide you. So yeah, Yeah. no, no, it's very, very so right now I'm coming through to other questions that came through when I had asked people to send in some questions. Uh, we've got some really, really, really fun ones. One of them okay. was, what, what kind of a student were you in high school? Were you a prefect? <laughs> <laughs> or a social butterfly? <laughs> uh, I, was, I was an all-rounder. Um, in, in school, I'll okay. talk about high school. We're called junior school, I mean, honestly. I'll talk about high school. Um, okay. I was an all-rounder. I was, uh, yes, I was uh, very social. Um, <laughs> I was very, very social. Um, I, uh, I, was, I was an all-rounder when I say, like, I was in clubs. So I did clubs and sports. So I played basketball um, very, very well and very passionately and very seriously. So I was a basketballer, mm-hmm. okay? And then I also was sort of every club you can think of, from Toastmasters to debate to interact. I even okay. started the food. Okay. I even started a club called Current Affairs at my high school because there was no Current Affairs club. 
And I was like, well, how are we talking about important subjects? How are we touching on things that matter? I started a club called CCA, the Chesapeake Current Affairs. And, um, you know, mm-hmm. that was me, like my pride and joy. It was just a place where we could be real with each other and talk about anything and everything, you know. So I really, really liked that. So, um, but I'm still starting from Zogoro and be exactly, exactly. But yeah, you know, but I was, I was academic. I was, I was, I was honestly blessed being all around. I can't say that I was. You know, I didn't have a white blazer for like straight A grades. I'll give you that. But you know, mm-hmm. that's it all for that. You know what I mean? I did very, very well. Um, and, and um, you know, I was also confused in lower six foot D, which route do I take? You know, do we go sciences? Do we go arts? You know, because I could have done either. Um, but um, mm-hmm. to be fair, no, I was more around. I was a busy body, like I was. And other schools, you know, always connected, even with girls' schools. And I had friends here, friends there. So it was, yeah. It was a very colorful high school life. Were well, you a prefect as well? Sorry? Were you a prefect as well? We didn't have prefects in my high school. They stopped them before okay. I got up. Yeah, it was one That's of those. I mean, I mean, I can go to air, leadership system. We must all be equal, you know, chi chi chi. And I'm like, oh, you know. Um, so we didn't have prefects. We had leaders. So you were either head of house or head of clubs or head of sports. You know, so you still have your captains of basketball, hockey. You know, head of debate, head of interact. You know, all of that. But in terms mm-hmm. of actual, it wasn't. Um, but yeah, you know. So that was that. But I, some in my junior high school years, I was, I was a bit of a mean girl, you know. That's what I wanted to ask because when I got this question, when I read about the prefect, I started thinking of the prefects that I had in my high school. I'm thinking of the one time that they had to make me kneel with my hands on top and ah, it was painful. So I wanted to ask if you were a prefect and if you were a mean one. <laughs> No, 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 no. Oh, so no. When I say mean girl, no, no, no. I wasn't a bully to juniors. In fact, juniors liked me. I was very nice to juniors. When I say a mean girl, I mean like we we had a little click, you know. Tangasneka click again, I can do, and you know, we really thought we were the cream of life, you know. And um, yeah. So when I say mean, I, I think like cream. Cream. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> a story for another day. <laughs> It was a lot. Um, it was a lot. Um, but, you know, that's what high school is about. There will always be those kinds of settings. So, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> so, back to life. Something serious. How has your perception of life changed over time? Yeah. Is there something that you think probably you look back and think, oh, I was right to think this way, or I was right to go this way, or... Mm, I think I messed up here or something like that. Yeah. Um, Look, my perception of life has changed from naivety to reality. I think I was always such a good person. And that's like, in in my mind, I was so young and naive. And a lot of my thinking in my relationships Mm -hmm. and the reality of life, even in work before I entered any job. So I think my perception Mm -hmm. of life changed that not everyone is a nice person. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not everyone means well. That was very, very hard for me to come come to grips with because I'm a sincere and genuine person. When I invest in anything or anyone, I'm there and I mean it, you know. So my only, like, tough lessons in life have just been that disappointment where you expect the best out of everybody, but as you wouldn't like that, you know. Um, that's been a hard life, you know. I, I That naivety, at some point it was good innocence where sort of they say ignorance is bliss, but it hurt me so yeah. many times so many times that I'll never mm-hmm. ever mm-hmm. look at people and think the best of everybody. I know it's a very pessimistic thing to say, but it's the honest truth. Mm-hmm. You must always allow yourself a little bit of room to be like, you know what? People are not what you think, you know, um, mm-hmm. whether it's colleagues, whether it's friends, whether it's family. Um, so you mm-hmm. must always be real with yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So moving on, how have you sort of like managed um, relationships or relationship with friends um at work obviously because of what's been going on um how have you yourself managed to just keep those relationships hey with that one guy to be honest i've learned to live and let live you know before i thought that i could um you know manage people or you know yeah but now how how you know how i've just learned is just if you you've got to just allow that human beings will be what they are and um, once you allow yourself mm-hmm. that, you know, someone once said to me, oh, what broke your heart, you know? And we got into this deep mm-hmm. discussion and I saw this meme on Instagram that said, the only thing that broke my heart was my own expectations. Um, and sometimes sure. you need to, mm-hmm. yeah, sometimes you need to lower mm-hmm. and listen to your 
recommendations and lawyer relationships and also just keep your circle small. There's an age to have a clique and a crew and a gang, you know. Then there's a time where when you're becoming a bit more serious in your career and even in your love life, you've got to narrow mm-hmm. down your circle of friends. You've got to narrow down who you roll with um, because they will be the first to talk about you. They'll be the first to try to bring mm-hmm. you down out you. And you've got to also understand why someone's in your life. Is it that they want something from you or that you're supposed to give them something? There's no relationship that's equal. There is none. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Every friendship, mm-hmm. every relationship, someone is giving more than the other is taking. Um, so it's always important mm-hmm. to assess those relationships. If it's a friendship, you must know I'm the giver here. Well, you know that friend is always calling you, I need you, I need to talk, oh, please, can I? And that's okay. Sometimes we're meant to be yeah. givers, you know, we're meant to be there for yeah. people. And then there's times where you're the receiver and you know, but you can go to this person any time of the day and say, Shawa, and it's right, Tika, and it's right. mm-hmm. So, yeah, mm-hmm. especially for women, I encourage us. I'll come out 28 to women. Our circle of friends yeah. should be bigger than one hand because you're lying to yeah. yourself. Mm-mm. I've got food and gas saying, narrow down your circles. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Narrow, narrow yeah. it down completely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so how, how do I, in relationships, so, so like, how do I, let's say I'm trying to guard my heart. Someone is just trying to guard their heart and you, you, you feel these people are not the right people for me. How do you sort of like move away from those people? <laughs> they just move. How do you just withdraw? You move. You move. You move. Um, Especially from a friend that's just calling you for help all the time, but they don't even help you as well when you when you're in need. No, no. If you've got a friend who calls you for help all the time, it's okay, uh, Tuffy. Because sometimes, like I said, as in in the world, we're designed to be givers and takers. If you still have uh-huh. enough to keep giving to this friend, there's no harm. Mm-hmm. Keep giving. It's okay. Because you know what, there's a blessing in giving. It's not a problem. Yeah. How can I help you today? You know what I mean. <laughs> Um, so, but you, you, you need to move. There are some that are toxic where it's like, this is just not serving me anymore. And you just yeah. move away. Some people need an explanation. If you realize that, those things you used to do, busy. no, sorry, I can't make it though. You know, all the best. Um, or, uh-huh. you know, you it's available to them. And then they also learn to, to act without you there, uh-huh. you know, you just, uh-huh. and when you're older, you just slowly, you don't, you don't always sit down and say, look, I've been thinking, and I realize that you and I are in different places in our lives. Those words will bite you in the bottom because women will go yeah. and quote you. Yeah. And then they come yeah. out. There's no need to be nasty. <coughs> you just pull away. Uh-huh. No way to pull away in Bichana. Actions speak for themselves. By lockdown, one need to pull away. Test out only less my friends. <laughs> because it's not like that. It just happens by itself, you know, and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, this is my time, this is my effort in each other. And it just happens yeah. like that. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Mm-hmm. No, I totally agree. I totally agree. Um, I've got yeah. Pate is saying, by narrowing your circles, aren't you closing doors for other opportunities? Look, yes and no, but I mean, those are things that you now sort of pray for in terms of discernment, you know, to always close the right mm-hmm. doors. But, you know, when you're honest with yourself and you realize that this is not going to work anymore, it's not painful. You know, you just close it and you move on. It's You can't always live life like that. But if I close this door, Josita, say I wash up. And you put it the door. The same way you closed it, you can also open it. Why are we acting mm-hmm. like people are dying? It's not death. Mm-hmm. You know, you're closing a door. Or close the door, leave a window open. You know, it's, it's not mm-hmm. hard and hard. You're not blocking mm-hmm. them from your phone, you're not cutting them from your life. You're just saying, look, mm-hmm. slow this relationship down a bit because this particular avenue does not serve me. It doesn't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, definitely. But then when it comes to, to relationships, like this is a topic that's been going on and on and on. When it comes to relationships, sometimes some women, we're naive enough, like what you mentioned earlier, that you see the signs earlier on and you just think, I will change this person or they will change with time. So for me, it will be like, I'll keep myself with them till they change or they will change. How how can one, you know, try and just avoid that? Is this sort of like a mindset that you have or? Just stop it. Oh, no, sweet, I'm one. <laughs> I know, sweet, I'm one. In deep. How can she just stop? You know that saying, that saying, I that saying, 
I want to see the chirimuma or chirimumu or something like that. No, you know what? I get that. I do, but you know what? Uh, you, you as women, and it's it's also it's also an age thing, to be honest. When you're in your twenties and you're passionate, and you're fired up. It's not easy to let go of a bad thing. When you read all the science, you're like, no, no, I can't do what this. And it's you, you then just tell yourself all these things. But at the end of the day, um, you know, you always uh, on the changing each other from a relationship, scar. That's the last thing we can do for each other. Like I said, there's an age for it. Kana makura me say you're my high school sweethearts and you're still at those ages where you're like Play-Doh. You know Play-Doh, I tell you, but now you can make it any shape you want because it's Play-Doh. Mm -hmm. But when someone becomes clay and it's, it's harder, then they mm -hmm. become cement. It's impossible. So you mm -hmm. must also understand the level and the age of the person you're dealing with. Um, so that you can um, try and have that dream of changing one or growing with one when you're younger. But reduce also my thirties or ultra gum, come on, I forty something. What you are known to chum day? Anyway, no, 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 no. It's not. It's not. It comes with maturity anyway. It comes with it. It's got seasons. It's definitely got seasons. Yeah. Munachi, munachi, we are not change our oka. Cannot, cannot change one more. Mhm. Mhm. Yeah, that's that's exactly, that's what we were saying the other time. You can't change a person. Only God can. Or if yes. that person wants to change, then they will change. Simple. Simple. And people, mm. there's also the thing that I've read as well that says um, you cannot change a man. Or someone said, no. Someone said, how do you keep a man? Right? And the answer is a man who wants to be kept. Thank is you. That, yeah. It's that simple. Yeah. You can't say no, but I know I'm prettier. Then all you stalk the other woman, and then this and that. No, please, you know. Yo, oh, sure, you're you just... sure, you're many more things than this other person. Murume arukuda ku change it, bandiye ano change it. Kunzekwa is also it's not control. It's just not. Mm -hmm. You can do. And you get you yourself in that relationship as well. Just yeah. be yourself. Because at the end of the day, it's too much work. Yeah trying to impress yeah. someone because you think they will keep you there by you being someone else. There you go. Yeah. I see Jackie Mkita is watching. Hey, Jackie. Aw. She's my big sister. Um, hey, Jackie. Hey, big sis. <laughs> yeah, she's a big sister to me. What's going on? Yeah. I have Mufa, Mufaro. Um, she's mm -hmm. saying, I have learned closing a door does not really mean that we fight or hurt each other emotionally. So much that we can't talk in the future. It just means we're ex ex we're exiting, we're existing in different spaces. Okay. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Definitely. Correct. Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, just reading out your comments, guys. If you've got any questions, let me know. Um, Titan. Hey, Titan. He's he's saying your blessings will always find you, regardless of which door you close. Okay. True. And True, if closing yeah. that door supports your mental health, don't hesitate to close it. Mm. Mm. Amen. <laughs> Definitely, peace of mind. Peace of mind is very, very important. Definitely. Moving on to yeah. the next question that how we had. Is, how is Titan doing now? By the way, sorry, my interviewer and me just wants to ask Titan, how are you? How is Titan? How are you? How is your heart? And have you moved on? Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have friend. something in store for him? Titan, <laughs> please comment with your question back, please. No. <laughs> we'll have to do an interview for you, Titan. <laughs> Just to hear how you are. I was <laughs> <laughs> Don't answer, laugh out loud. <laughs> Titan, I'm okay. My heart is well. Okay, it's winter, Titan. Is your heart warm? Mm. Tell us. Titan, I think I need to interview you and ask you all these questions. How you are? Are you warm? Everything, you know, just so we know. Because people are content if you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm moving on. Uh, no, it's too much more. All right, we'll do it. Okay. The other, yeah. the other question that I had was, if the broadcast airwaves were to be open for you for just three minutes, three minutes for the whole world to hear you, what would be your speech? What do you mean? What? 
what will come to your mind first? The whole world is watching you. You're only given three minutes. What would you talk about? Sure. Okay, the first thing I would say, the first thing I would say um, is the world belongs to us as humans, right? But it also doesn't belong to us. We're here and we're just passing through. And the most important thing that we can do is leave the world better for the people that come after us. Um, I always talk about my niece whenever she's with me. And um, I really want to say that we forget sometimes our younger generation. So if the world is listening, let's separate. We're dealing right now with uh, race in a very big way. So let's separate races at the moment. I'm going to speak as a black African child and say that the one thing I would want us to do is to start to build generational wealth for black African children. We have come past so much since the, um, you know, this is the founding of the OAU in 1963 to where we are today in 2020. Many countries have been liberated, but we're still not yet free. That's a problem for me mm. as a young black African woman who's exposed and traveled. What kind of Africa are we leaving for the world? What Africa do we want? My niece is 14. I ask, you know, I say to myself, okay, what do 14 year olds want for their future? Is that a future we are building? Is it a future that they'll still have to clean up some things that we've messed up with? So in terms of black Africa, we have a lot of issues that we're still dealing with. Globally, yes, there's race and it pains me that we still have to deal with this as an issue. We shouldn't still be talking mm -hmm. about that. Like, honestly speaking, I don't get it. You know, um, I really don't get it. And and for me, humans should just look at each other as humans. Um, but unfortunately, yes. that's not going to happen overnight because the reality is that's where we are. But what I will mm -hmm. say is Black Africa, and in fact, all of Africa, let's make sure that we leave this place better for those that are coming after us. They must understand how mm -hmm. to guard our resources. They must understand not to sell out. They must understand to build. Um, not to get, um, you know, personal wealth. I think our generation is so obsessed with personal wealth. What what do I have a house? What do I have as my car? Where did I go to school? Are my kids at the group A schools? It's very, very selfish and very personal. And we need to start mm -hmm. becoming more community-based, more Zimbabwean, more regional, more African, so that we are speaking as a whole and not as an individual. We can't talk about the richest people in Africa when there's such a huge gap. And I think that's the scariest thing for me. When the, um, you know, whenever we have a problem in a global pandemic and we need donations, you know, Cyclone I, for example, that hit Southern Africa badly. Where were all the millionaires at that time? Even when COVID yeah. first uh, hit Africa, where were the millionaires, top whatever, richest in whatever? Some were even having, you know, Instagram booty clapping parties and giving out money to people who can dance the best instead of actually putting money toward um, a noble cause. So we have this generation that is so lost and so selfish that we're not building mm -hmm. each other. And Instagram lives, we're having them. That's great. But then what? Mm -hmm. Beyond mm -hmm. this is new. This is your hustle. This is your Instagram post. But beyond mm -hmm. you, beyond your sphere, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. you know, it's not mm -hmm. So I think generation young, we know what to do. You know, at this time, it's not so it has no shamisa. Tika bunza na kuti wanonya so it has the outstanding. Wanoita kuti I'll die for Africa. I'll die for my country. I'll die for someone beyond myself. And if you go to single account, you cannot twenty bagada. And that's a worry for me. So I, I think that was more than three minutes. But um, yeah, and I know I was biased toward Africa, but um, um. I'm 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 a mad black woman. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Mad. Yes, queen. Yes, queen. <laughs> <I don't... laughs> no, thank you so much. You see, thank you so much. Media is yours. You've just spoken to the world right now. Thank you. You have spoken to our generation right now. Thank you for the plan. I'm sure for everyone that's listening, we can do something. If you haven't started doing anything, you can find something that you can do to change our generation today. Mm -hmm. Today, it starts with mm -hmm. us ourselves. We can't expect mm -hmm. anybody else out there to change it for us. Our fathers have done what they did, but it's on us and our kids that are coming up after us. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. like, that was that was really good. That was awesome. <laughs> Moving yeah. on to that. <laughs> Moving on to that. Yeah, I want to actually ask if you don't mind. I want to just call okay. my niece right now quickly. I want to ask my niece because, you know, she's 14, like I'm saying, and I, I'm curious to know from their generation, well, she's 14 this year, um, but I'm being corrected. She's like 13, 13. Um, but I want to, I want to see and, and ask from this generation, um, you know, what their expectations are for Africa, if they even have an understanding, you know, of, of you know, that would be good to know. 
Absolutely. At least we know what we're changing as well, or where we're going. Hey, Raina, how are you? No, no, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm very well. Good to have you here. <laughs> yeah, so Raina, maybe you can tell us what your generation expects out of Africa when you as young Form 2s are looking at the world. What are your expectations? Well, I guess some parts of the world are more developed than Africa in general. Mm -hmm. Like, there's, like, many countries, like, in Africa that aren't, like, they don't really have many facilities for things that are just, like, more advanced. Whereas in other countries, like, overseas, they have more advanced things and stuff. So I think mm -hmm. we just need to make it, like, more advanced and, yeah. So you want to be in Africa, basically. Which is like what? When you say advanced, what? As a young person, what would you love to be doing instead of sitting at home watching TV? Well, personally in Zimbabwe, there's like nothing to do. There's not really like any water parks. There's no malls. There's no like, there's no entertainment. Mm. And like, yeah. Mm. So, so, so what would you like to see? see? Yeah. What would you like to see to be in Zim? That's not in Zimbabwe right now that you can see from other countries that are outside of Zimbabwe. Things like Disney World, um, like water parks, like malls. Well, countries like South Africa have malls and stuff, and lots of other countries. Mm -hmm. But Zimbabwe, there's like nothing. Um, mm -hmm. So there's basically there's just nothing to do. Mm. Purely okay. spoken. Thank you. Okay. Love you. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so yeah. different. Mm. She's just speaking purely on entertainment. Just looking at Pumbo, that's what I wonder. But just as young people, mm -hmm. can you just put your act together? You know, can we just have something mm -hmm. to do? Recreational. Things that keep their minds out of depression, keep their minds out of any mental health issues, that keep their mm -hmm. minds active. Things that they deserve. Mm -hmm. We were spoiled for choice. Whether mm -hmm. Tainamba Tainamba Pado, Tainamba Waterworld, we have so much to do. Definitely. Today, Definitely. today sure, I mean, will be, you know, Vanava. So I think there's Definitely. a big problem big problem you know um so it's definitely it's on to us right now our generation yeah. here now to do something yeah. about it you know and just see what we can do to actually give to the people that are to the kids that are following us right now and this right. is what they want it's something yeah. so simple but that's what and they want business. and it's a business model for all the entrepreneurs listening here to say sure sure mm -hmm. I you know, something equivalent to Disneyland. What are kids are meant to do? Kids are everywhere. Kids are big business. They're big money. But young people here don't get it. Everyone wants to do one thing. You know, so for people like I work out, but surely why are we always pursuing one thing? Why are we always competing in one sector? There's so mm -hmm. much that we can do to build There's so country. much. Yeah, and so it's much. not about being shallow to say, okay, kids want water park. It's really actually their right. And you'd make so much money from that. Put a slide mm -hmm. and a dam and make money. And just you can open it every and Saturday and Sunday. Let kids come and play. Is that a, is that a lot to us? Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think um, we, we really have a lot to discuss and we need to open our minds a lot. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And to do something about it. To actually mm -hmm. do something, start doing something about it just to make sure that mm -hmm. all these things are there. Even just sure. to go out and hear exactly what she was saying, what they want, yes. what tickles what their mind. Yes, you know? yes. absolutely. Because right now they're just at home, bored, doing nothing, yes. and their mind is just yes. idle. For weekend because so it's like okay where can we go and i'm like oh, come over and i'm like oh, i don't know what to do with you i mean we can hang out we can cook you know um but yeah so it's it's really an area we need to look at and these are the people we're building these are the young people we're building um and, and they're gonna take over from what i don't know i don't know no thank you for that and before we finish off uh, i would the time just flies just like that. I'm just shocked. I still have a lot of questions, but we'll just do what we have. <laughs> what has been important to you as a daughter or auntie or sister, my nini, Tete, what has been important for you? Well, what's been important for me is firstly not being called auntie. 
okay? Because okay. I'm Tete or I'm my Nini or I'm Buya. But you know what? It's, it's just having that role, you know, like saying, all right, mm-hmm. well. And that I'm identity. Can I, uh, can I tete yeah. I mean, no, what did my Tete's teach me? And not phase it mm-hmm. out. I don't think that mm-hmm. because 2020 and it's a different generation, I mustn't tell them. You know, there's so much I'd mm-hmm. love to say on live, you know, but I don't think I can. But even now, I'm so wrong. Oh, on. There's, some <laughs> that I was, I'm playing, there's some things that I was taught, you know, at her mm-hmm. age and before her age, where I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I found my tete so weird. I was like, why would you tell me that? What is that, you know? And now I'm like, eh, I don't know what she is with TV. She'll just think I'm... We can talk about it because the next question from this was, what can you remember that you were advised from tete, mama, gogo? That was going to be the next question from this. So you just tell us whatever you can remember. Yeah, yeah. What I remember really... um. Look, when we were growing up, when we were younger, it was just being trained how to be a good woman. Um, you know, just, you know, being orderly, being clean, you know, bathing twice a day, you know, just the things that make you a lady, you know. Uh, my grandmother even used to teach me how to knit. Um, and I really, really love that. And I'll never take away those lessons. And even just like I'm saying, being able to cook a pot of sadza, you know, we all know our first attempt at sadza was awful, you know, um, messing up the Definitely. stove and then it's not like burn sadza, you know, it was just a lot. And, you know, I think, I think um, now, and then you sort of, you enter the, the young adult years and, you know, before, um, you know, you enter a serious relationship, there is that counsel you get. Um, and that's the stuff where I'm like, oh, that's really deep stuff. You know, that's really interesting. I didn't know that. Um, mm-hmm. And you, you really have to, to, to position yourself. But, you know, my, my tetes and my mbuyas, they taught me where a lot of it, I might question it today. Like, is this still current? But then the question is, isn't that what we're meant to carry forward? But at the same time, it's like, well, yeah. that's not how our interests work anymore. Um, they they mm-hmm. teach of resilience. Well, some of these things kept yeah. us hidden. Yeah, you know, they teach of you know, don't answer back, you know, be, you know, what is Nini Pisa, Chichichi. They've gone out of vinegar. We're like, I want to, but I didn't so have you know, um, so it's a very, very different kind of teaching, and it's very hard to find that balance yes. because, believe it or not, as much as we have changed as women, a man has not changed. Doesn't yeah. matter whether it's 21st uh-huh. century women, my grandmother's husband and my husband will not want me to tune him out. Uh-huh. So, women have changed, uh-huh. but men have not. That's the weird thing. Men have not. Uh-huh. They're still in that box that I'm in charge, I'm the man, and you won't speak to me like that. So you come with uh-huh. your degrees and your education. Yeah, I'm ningi. I'm bringing this much to the table. Dinda tenga isu in motkarin deyango. He's like, but still, still dini So we are exactly. the ones that are evolving beyond beyond our years. And our men, mm-hmm. no matter how much of a cool dude they are, kanari kana stana zaki. Still, still, I don't know. I still don't make it. But same room. Do you understand? Whether you are who, so it doesn't matter. So in these two minutes, in these two minutes that we have left, would you say? There is more teachings for women than there is for men out there. Even now. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I think some men just walk into relationships. That's not going to understand it. Worse than marriage, mm-hmm. you know. So I think men, they just wing it. You know, they walk in and they wing it. We're, we're all prepared. And we're like, yeah, yeah. Is I'm it because like, they expect that we are prepared? That's it. To bow down to them or to just do whatever they want. We are, but a lot of us are not, which is why the divorce rates are so high. A lot of us just yeah. walked away and thought, you know what? I don't think this is okay for me. I don't think I have the stomach yeah. for it. I am too yeah. much. I worked too hard. I studied too long. And we're like, hmm, you know, so yeah, you know, yeah. but at the end of the day, then you're alone and single. So who's the winner? So your, your tete will say, yes, yes, all right, and I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to forget the name of the winter. You know, so you then ask yourself, well, what am I supposed to do? Where do you find the balance? Yeah. You don't yeah. lose yourself, you know. So it's really, really, it's tricky for us, you know. Um, but I think definitely the main there's another topic that we can we can actually talk about. Probably if if all the audience say yes to having Ruvenico back, we will have her back <laughs> <laughs> for a part two. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's always good. I mean, I was nervous initially. I was like, "Oh my God, what are you gonna talk about? What's she gonna say?" Ah, you know. Um, but it's it's good. You've been you've been really really no, great. Good. I really, 
right? Yeah. So thanks, thank you. In thirty seconds, a fun fact about you. I don't know, Reina. What's a fun fact about me? I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know what is fun jokes. <laughs> Wait, no, I'm actually a lot of fun. I don't know, Shumindo because I'm like, well, well, I need to do the line, you know, I don't know. <laughs> um, fun fact about me. Um, I don't know. A lot know. of biases are coming in for, your one, for, for coming back. I don't know. If well, I'm you fun fact. You should have you should have just done like a truth or dare, like, well, have you ever done this? Have you ever done that? But when you say a fun fact, okay. it's like so on the next right. one. On the next one, which you were doing a truth or dare on you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. All right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, thank you so much, Rebecca. <laughs> no, you have been amazing. Thank you so much Thank for coming you. through. Happy. Thanks for being such a great person to talk to. Um, I really Thank appreciate it. And, and, all and for you. everyone else that's been in, thank you, thank you so much. And we'll speak to Renico. She's seen all your yeses on coming back, bring her back, bring her back. Yes, 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 yes. She can but see but I can see all these people like Obert Mazili, Sensei Mugo, Johnny Norman. This is nice, man. Nice to see They all want you back. We have to do oh. this again. It's been, it's been so oh, thank you so much, Ruby. Yeah. No, you go have a lovely afternoon. I know your weather's so much better than ours. It's not so back in the morning. Too. Time in Zimbabwe, guys. Yeah. So please, please allow. <laughs> and you thank too. you so much, Ruby. You take no. care. Thank you. Say bye, bye to Rena as well. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, guys. On that note, I say thank you so much. You have all been amazing. And all your questions that have been coming through, thank you. Um, if I haven't picked up your message or your question, um, my manager, I'm sure she's been screenshotting some of them. We can send them through to Veneco for her to give us an answer to. And we'll see if we can have it back um, again. But thank you so much for having me, for joining in. On that note, I say Good bye. Your party is coming. Don't worry, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ropa. Show me. I'll save it in my Instagram TV. Thank you, Millie. Thank you so much. Thank you, Uhuru. Thank you very much. And make sure that on Tuesday, you look up for our next guest. Make sure you follow Savage House because we will soon move everything over to Savage House. But Tuesday, keep it locked. Yeah. Thank you, Tuffy D1. Thank you so much for coming through. Anytime from now, it will end. So thank you so much, guys. You are amazing. Thank you for the support. Thank you so much. I'll just let it end. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you.